Okay, today I'm going to be trying to recreate a recipe that I ate in southern Spain. Up in the mountains, we stopped at a little family restaurant and we had a delicious pork stew with saffron and beans. So I'm going to try to recreate that today and I have no idea really what I'm doing. I'm just going to experiment and see how we get along. I do know, I'm fairly sure I identified the herbs that were in there as thyme, rosemary and sage. I know it had saffron in it and onions and beans. I have a feeling it had a little bit of uh, paprika in there as well, but not very much because, it, because the stew was very yellow and it wasn't red. And it had pork. Now I haven't got access to the same cut that they used there I don't think so I'm just going to use some pork casserole which has got a little bit of fat marbling in it which I think is important for the recipe. The main flavour ingredient in the casserole is saffron and I have got threaded saffron but I'm actually going to use powdered saffron today because powdered saffron seems to give it more colour and flavour infused through the whole dish. I do like thread saffron but I tend to use that in paella or other dishes but today we're going to be using powdered saffron. So let's get started. In a large pan, I'm going to put some olive oil for frying off the pork. I'll get that nice and hot. Okay, the pieces of pork are cut, already cut to about the right size, I would say. So let's just get them into the pan and get some browning going on. I'm actually going to cook this until I can see some crispy edges on there. But meanwhile, let's get the chopped onions in the pan. So I've got two small onions chopped into smallish pieces. And we'll fry that along with the pork. I'm going to turn the heat up now a bit, I think. Because I don't want to cook it all the way through. I just want to kind of toast the edges and get some browning going on there. Okay, I'm going to put about half a teaspoonful of paprika into this pan because, because it does need a little bit of cooking off. That's it, I think that is sufficiently browned now. Onions are taking a little bit of caramelisation there on the bottom of the pan. That's just perfect. So I'm going to turn that heat off now and we'll transfer this into the slow cooker. So this is my large slow cooker and we're just going to put that meat in there like so. Now this casserole will have potatoes and beans in it later. Ow, it's burning my finger. This casserole will have potatoes and beans in it later but I'm not going to add them until later in the cooking or else they will just all disappear and cook down to nothing. So there we go. Now I'm not, I'm not just going to wash that pan up, I'm going to deglaze that with a little bit of white wine. But also in the slow cooker, I'm going to add a pint of chicken stock. I'm using a stock cube. That's why you didn't see me add salt to the meat when I was browning it, because I'm just using a chicken stock cube. You don't happen to have any chicken stock handy. And at this point, we put in our tiny, precious pot of powdered saffron. I'm going to save that pot because I think I might use that for something. So that's going to go in the slow cooker and get on a low heat for probably six hours, I think, just to cook it through. So all those bits of caramelised onion and pork juices that are browned onto that pan, we're not going to waste those. I'm going to put in about a, about a glass of white wine and we'll just use that to loosen that all up off the bottom of the pan. We will also evaporate off some of the alcohol here, so we're just going to simmer it a little bit to boil off some of the alcohol. I think I'm going to use a plastic spatula for this because I don't really want to scrape, scrape the seasoning off my pan. So, look at all of that. That's almost a gravy in itself there. Make sure we loosen up all those little bits of onion and herbs and pork juices that are caramelised onto the bottom of the pan. And that's going to go into the slow cooker along with the meat and 
saffron and our onions. Good. Okay, so I've just peeled six potatoes. Uh, I'll have to apologise for any background noise you can hear. There's a dog barking outside and there's an action movie on the TV. So anyway, I'm just going to quarter these potatoes. And now we've got about two hours of cooking time left in the slow cooker. I'm just going to put these in nice large chunks like that so they won't overcook. I'm going to put those into the casserole and the beans I will add in about another hour or so. Right, so let's have a look at this stew. This has been cooking pretty much all day. Let's just dish up some of this now. Color, the golden colour that we've got from that saffron. All in there. Let's have a little taste. It's going to be far too hot to taste properly, but let's have a taste of a tiny bit of pork. The pork has gone very tender, but without drying out. Mm. But something has eluded me. It's one of those things where I don't know, maybe it was just the sunshine when I was there in Spain. But uh, this is nice, but it's not what I was aiming for. Never mind. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video there to explain something. The one thing that was wrong with this dish turned out to be the seasoning. After I turned the camera off and got on with my dinner, I just added a little bit of salt and pow, that flavour came out. Now, I'm not going to say this casserole was exactly authentic, but once I'd added that little bit of seasoning, it came very close. It's good. On with dinner. So thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again soon.